Over the last couple of weeks, I've been discussing one of Magnus Carlsen's favourite strategies, provoking black into advancing the kingside pawns. And I showed you a game played by Pragnananda, the Indian superstar, 18-year-old from Chennai, where he employed exactly this strategy as well to, to win a game. And I want to show you another game played by Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, and again from the Tatar Steel India uh, Rapid and Blitz Tour. So this is against Rajabov. So Prag playing white, Rajabov playing black. And once again, Prag goes for the Joko Piano, not a Spanish, but a Joko Piano. Now, if you remember against Vidit, the game went c3, and there was this move, bishop g5, and he's trying to provoke g, uh, yeah, h6, and then g5, and that's exactly what happened in the game. Now, Prag plays it rather differently here. He goes d3, okay, that's pretty standard. Now here, instead of playing c3, he goes for knight c3. So rather different strategy. Let's see how this works out. Now it's interesting. Rajabov looks at this and goes, mm, okay, I know what this guy's about. I'm just going to go h6 and just nips that one in the bud. So he's preventing bishop g5. But is this a waste of time? Well, let's have a look. The thing is, white actually can't do anything immediate here because, you know, if you're going to break in the middle, normally you want to have c3 so you can go d4. But with the knight on c3, there's not a huge amount that white can accomplish here. But let's see what happens. a3. Well, that's to give the bishop an escape square here. So it's kind of preempting this move knight a5. And... Uh, Rajabov does the same, making sure that bishop can escape uh, a knight attack. And bishop e3. Okay, so this is Prague's idea. He would very much like an exchange on e3 because that would open up uh, the f file. Well, to some extent, might give white some play later on in the f file. But Raj Rajabov plays very sensibly and just plays d6. He's not afraid of the exchange. This is actually what happened because those pawns give black a really good clamp in the middle of the board. That knight is screaming to go into d4 at some moment. So uh, the question is, where is white's pawn break here? You know, just manoeuvring, it's going to be very hard to achieve anything here. Uh, so what does Prague do? Well, he started off with knight d5. Okay, it still doesn't look like anything special to me. Queen d6, yeah, that might support a bishop coming to e6, and the queen certainly looks like it's on a good square here. Prague's next move is very clever. I mean, if he exchanges here, I don't think white has anything at all in this position. I mean, bishop g4 could come. That's nasty. And if h3, well, you can always just go bishop e6. Queen is well placed on f6. Prague plays knight e3. Aha, that's a clever idea. And we're looking at that f5 square now. That's very important. Really clever choice by Pragnananda. Keeping pieces on the board and that knight. You remember Carlsen playing that knight to e3 in his game against Tabatabai. That actually got exchanged off, but what a beautiful square it is. Still looking at the, the, all these very important squares, but f5 is the one it's got its eye on, really. But still, black's position looks very respectable here, and knight d4, that queen protecting e5, and the knight slams in on the outpost. If that's exchanged, then black has a space advantage here. That knight's got to move again. Black is very comfortably placed. You can imagine something like this taking place later. It looks like a kind of King's Indian reversed. So what do you play here? Okay, white play. What would you do in this position? This is very interesting. White to play. Prague goes knight h4. Hmm. 
Well, now we can see that two knights are looking at the f5 square, which would hit black's queen. Okay, what's going on? b5, gain some space, the bishop goes back. So what does white want here? Well, let's have a look at bishop e6. Now, that looks like a very sensible move. You want to exchange off that powerful bishop in the corner. And if a knight comes in here, well, that can just be exchanged off. I mean, this is a very pleasant position for black. That knight looking very solid on f6. Black still controls a lot of the center. Nice position for black. But then c3 is interesting. And then the knight comes in, hitting the queen. Of course, you know, that looks very nice for white. Queen d8 and queen f3 is the classic follow-up with a knight on f5. You know, it might jog to the side and go to g3. You, know, you can see the attack is building nicely. And there's a, a typical tactic here. If queen takes pawn, you've got knight g7. If that's taken, then knight f5 check. Discovered attack winning the queen. So that's tricky. So what did Raja do here? Well, he felt provoked. He didn't want that knight coming to f5. He played g5. There we go. Once again, we see that move. And once again, if the knight comes into f5, well, that can be exchanged. And actually, black is very solid here. You can see that knight controls the light squares. The pawns control the black squares. They complement each other beautifully. Positionally, black is doing very nice, nicely there. Um, so let's go back. G5. So that knight just came back to F3. Well, still looks fine for black. You know, doesn't seem as though... It seems very difficult for white to gain the attack on the king's side. Rook D8 looks very sensible, supporting the knight. You know, you, you want to sort of provoke C3 and then the, the D3 pawn will be weaker. So classic um, outpost play here. A4, okay, it looks looks more like a Spanish now with that pawn uh, on B5, that B pawn provoked into advancing. White perhaps wants to take here and yeah, there could be some latent threats. A discovered attack, so Rook B8. Knight d2. So the queen looks in this direction. Okay, that looks quite nice, but f4 certainly not happening with black's pawns here. So what's that about? Let's have a look. King g7. Now, just to repeat, this is a blitz game. And in a blitz game, you play natural moves. King g7 looks very natural to me because you step out of the line of the bishop, so no nasty tricks with bishop f7 check. King supports the knight and the pawn. It look, feels solid. In fact, Raja missed a nice pawn break here. He could have played c4. And after that's taken, then take on a4. I mean, certainly not obvious in a blitz game. And that, just for a moment, it blocks the, blocks the bishop, blocks these knights, actually, and opens the b file. Still very unclear position, but that's the way to go. And Raja had that possibility over the next few moves, actually. Okay, white play. What would you do here? Assuming that you're not worried about c4. I mean, it's actually difficult to prevent that, really. But what, what would you do here with white? Just bear in mind our strategy when the g5 advance appears. What do we want to do here? Prague played rook e1. So why has he played that? Because he wants to switch that knight via f1 to g3, and then he'll have two knights looking at that key f5 square, that weakened f5 square, weakened after this pawn advance g5. Okay, let's have a look. Bishop b6. Well, Raja changes his mind a little bit. 
I, th I suspect that if bishop takes, he would want to exchange with, uh, re sorry, recapture with the pawn, covering that f5 square. But of course, Prague doesn't take. He plays knight g3. So both knights looking at f5. It's incredible how the position turns. I can imagine Raja feeling quite uncomfortable now in this position. Queen d7. So yes, given that that could be a rather unpleasant fork, uh, the queen steps back. Okay, white to play. How do we keep going at uh, black's king? h4. In fact, c3 is also possible here. That's, that's another story, but h4 uh, is a nice idea. c3 with the idea that after the knight goes back, then a knight can land on f5. Um, but h4 also very strong. You can see once white exchanges here, then that pawn is looking a little bit loose. Bishop takes, bishop played. Rook takes. Queen e6. It's the rook which stepped back. Rook a1. And finally, Raja goes for c4. But it's too late now. Exchange on b5. That's actually very nice. You never know when that rook might be able to enter into the position. Knight f5 check. And Prague has achieved his goal. Knight f5. That was the goal way back when he provoked black with knight h4. He's looking at that square and g5 was provoked, although he had to come back. Finally, he's got that knight round to f5. King of Arts to g6. So at the moment, that knight is controlling these squares in front of the king, and black seems to be just about holding on, although that knight looks very powerful. Watch what happened. Queen f3. Nice move. Swinging towards the king. If g4, then that queen just nudges to the side. Attacking here. Black opening up. The rook defends. And now rook a3, or maybe, maybe rook a7. And you can double on the a file. <clears throat> and you can imagine a rook landing on a6. Oof. That looks nasty, or indeed a7. After queen f3, Raja played rook d7. There was an exchange on g5, and queen h3, because the rooks have been split, there's no chance to shut out the queen with rook h8. So queen h6 mate threatened. The knight came back. Okay, white to play. Well, there's certainly more than one winning move here, but... Prague's winning move was very nice. He played g4. And here Raja above resigned. Why? Okay, let's see what the threat is. If pawn takes pawn, queen h8 threatens queen g7 mate. And if f6 covers this square, but then the queen just darts back. And that's a beautiful checkmate. After g4, there is absolutely no way out for black. Very neat finish indeed. So there we go. Once again, it's the story of g5 being provoked way back here. And finally, Prague exploiting that weakness, even though he couldn't get into f5 straight away. But finally, he got there with some crafty manoeuvring rookie one and the knight coming to g3. Fantastic stuff. Well, Prague is really on fire at the moment. He didn't win the, the Tata Steel uh, Rapid and Blitz, but he came pretty close. And, you know, overall, he had a superb result. So he's still on fire after his uh, World Cup uh, runner-up success. If you're interested in supporting the channel, if you want to see more videos, um, then do check out patreon.com forward slash powerplay chess you'll see the links down there if you want to check it out uh, according to how much um, you contribute monthly or annually you can 
pay an annual membership, then you get extra video videos, newsletter, all kinds of interesting things. So join the Patreon community. Thanks for watching.